Hi, I'm Rick Hedeman with RSA, the Security Division of EMC. And in the last video, we talked a little bit about why uh, Archer GRC. Uh, and in this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the architecture behind uh, RSA Archer EGRC. Um, so when we look at the Archer uh, Arch architecture here, the fundamental layer um, is this middle layer here, and that's the framework um, that all the applications and all the data that feeds into it uh, rely on. So if we take this layer and take a look at some of the capabilities in that layer, um, we have a web-based interface, so any browser can access the application. We, we uh, support Excel-type uh, formulas and calculated fields for determining risk, for building calculations for display, for doing uh, notifications, for doing dashboarding and reporting. There's re a reporting a module as well, as well as a notification module, and that's very flexible, so you can provide dashboards to executives for different roles within the organization. You can create different views. Uh, so that's very important in terms of communicating your risk and compliance posture. Um, all the fields and all the views are uh, very heavily access controlled, so you can provide very granular access to fields on a screen, to uh, rows within the database, so you can get very granular about what you want to allow people to see and what you don't. Um, in addition to that, it provides very granular logging, so you can know exactly who changed what and when and why. Um, and then the last item here is really around workflow. So what happens when an incident happens? Who owns it? When does it get escalated? If somebody doesn't respond to it in a certain amount of time, who then gets notified, et cetera? So this is the framework upon which all of the Archer modules are developed. So this comes with any of the Archer modules that a customer would buy. And those Archer modules are really specific content areas that have been developed to help facilitate our customers solving problems faster. Uh, all of our co uh, customers will change those applications to some degree or another. They may add fields, they may remove fields, they may change the workflow slightly. Uh, but, but our customers tend to start with these modules because they get uh, a good out-of-the-box experience. So looking at some of those applications, um, policy management is a fundamental uh, component. It allows customers to author policies, uh, and it doesn't have to be security or risk-related policy. It can be any kind of policy, compliance-related policy. So who has authorization to author the policy? Who has authorization to change it? And then once that policy has been accepted, who does it get applied to? What resources? It could be people. It could be groups. It could be assets. And then ultimately, how do you know the policy is being followed? Um, so that's really policy management. The next one is risk management. So ultimately, your policies are in place to reduce your risk or to uh, comply with uh, some requirement, um, but what risks do you really care about? And you can't address everything, so what boils to the, top, to the top and how do you prioritize those things? So there's a risk management application for managing that process. Compliance management is a separate application for specifically managing compliance to particular regulations relevant to your particular business. So. You know, for instance, somebody may be um, subject to PCI compliance regulations if they process credit cards. Well, this gives you a way to manage how you are tracking to your compliance, and then when the auditors come in, you can give them a quick view of where you stand, and you can save yourself a lot of headaches of tracking down all that information. So compliance management. Associated with that um, is incident management. So when a situation happens where either you have a risk issue, you know, perhaps a policy out of a uh, compliance issue or a specific compliance issue, how do you deal with that, right? And it may be a technical thing or it may be something as simple as, uh, you know, some, somebody um, um, had something stolen out of their queue, right? How do you manage that incident? Who gets notified? How do you know it's, the loop's been closed and so on? 
Associated with all of that is an application we call enterprise management. And that's really understanding the assets in your particular organization. And those assets may be people, they may be business processes, they may be applications, they could be IT assets. Really any way you define an asset that's sort of groupable and you would want to look at either the compliance risks or policies associated with those um, entities. Another one might be vendor management. So again, in the prior video, we talked a little bit about vendor management, but there's a specific application associated with managing your third party vendors and who has um, responsibility for that. Threat management. So do you know what threats are um, you know, approaching your business and how do you manage those threats? And again, this comes back to you know, how is it related to what you care about in your enterprise and the risks associated with that. And then finally, business continuity management. Again, related to risks and related to policies, but ultimately related to your enterprise assets and what you care about within your enterprise. So these are the, the applications, we call them modules, that come out of the box with Archer. They're purchased separately. Typically, a customer will purchase a minimum of sort of three modules and then might add on additional modules. Typically, the way we see this implemented is a customer will say, I want to start in compliance, right? Well, in order to support compliance, I need enterprise and perhaps I need incident because I need to be able to deal with out of compliance kinds of situations. And then it will grow and I'll say, well, I, you know, I need to manage my risk program and perhaps I need to manage my policy. So it will extend to that. Now, that's sort of the application side of things. You know, on the technology underpinning all of this, there is content that gets pulled into the Archer application in a couple of different ways. One is specific content from RSA. These are updates specifically around compliance um, mappings within the application. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, the other pieces are data inputs from um, other entities within your organization. Perhaps it's um, antivirus scanning output, so you want to know what assets within your organization you know, haven't been scanned recently or have malware associated with them. Vulnerability scanners, so perhaps you need to know which machines haven't been patched and have vulnerabilities associated with them. Um, asset databases, typically we see customers that have multiple asset databases. Uh, Archer isn't the system of record here, but it can pull in those uh, asset databases and allow you to build business rules based on risk and policy and compliance associated with those assets. And then other types of data you may want to pull in. Maybe it's directory information. Maybe it's configuration management status kind of information. All this information is related back to the fundamental risk compliance policy and how you're addressing them within your organization. Um, so this is sort of a uh, conceptual architecture. It's all software based. Um, it sits within a relational database. Um, and the only sort of consideration that I would uh, mention here in terms of whether you run this as a software as a service, we do offer a software as a service option here, or you can run it on premise. Again, it's all software, so you can run it on your hardware. Um, if depending on how much data you want to actually feed into the system, you may want to be local to those data sources. So if you have your vulnerability scanner, your threat management, your, Volta, um, your CMDBs local, you may want an on-premise kind of solution to reduce the network traffic for pulling in this kind of data. So typically that wouldn't be used in a software and a service as a service kind of environment. The last piece I just wanted to mention here, this, con this RSA content, um, this is really key and it's, and it's very important relative to compliance management. Um, we see day in and day out new compliance requirements coming uh, to bear legally and so on. Um, these compliance requirements get applied to increasing amounts of assets within your organization. Mapping that content, um, those requirements from a compliance standpoint to 
the particular controls is a huge effort and not something that organizations really want to take on themselves. And this is something that RSA does and keeps updated on a quarterly basis. So I hope that gives you an idea of the sort of overall logical architecture of how RSA Archer is pulled together. In the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about some use cases, specifically around some of these solution areas.